Today, we are going to discuss causes of genital infections. I am Professor Dr. Ilham Sen. By the end of this lecture, we will be able to identify the normal flora of female genital tract. Recognize the characteristics of sexually transmitted infections. We will be able to list the microbes causing sexually transmitted infections. And we will know the roots of transmission of these uh, genital infections. And some microbes will be studied in uh, details in the males and female genital system. Normal flora of the female genital tract. Lactobacillus. Lactobacillus or lactobacilli are a group of gram-positive bacilli. They are present inside the vagina, inside the distal urethra, and near the external urethral opening. Uh, they, are, um, they are present in large number. And they are responsible for the acidity, the low pH of the vagina. Taban low pH is quite given because it restricts other pathogenic bacteria. But if this pH uh, increases above 4.5, this encourages other pathogenic bacteria to cause uh, sexual transmitted infection. Uh, uh, diphtroids, coagulase negative staphylococci, alpha hemolytic streptococci are also present in small numbers, mycoplasma, urea plasma, uh, and we have two important uh, organisms, Gardnerella vaginalis, Gardnerella vaginalis. These are cocobacilli, uh, gram-variable organism. They are present inside the vagina in a small number, but in certain circumstances also they increase in number, causing non-specific vaginosis. Also, candida can cause vaginal infections, uh, and candida is a form of fungus, unicellular fungus, which we call yeast. Um, as we have said, the low pH of the adult vagina is maintained by the presence of lactobacillus species, uh, which ferment uh, sugars to form acid, lactic acid. This acid lowers the pH of the vagina. But if we use uh, antibiotic therapy, continuous use antibiotics, this will kill a uh, large number of this lactobacillus. And of course, it will disturb the pH uh, level. It will rise. And uh, the potential pathogens can overgo that. Uh, as we have said, the taking advantage, the opportunistic infections here are Candida albicans and Gardnerella vaginalis. Sexually transmitted infections. Sexually transmitted infections. Infections transmitted by sexual activity. What makes sexual activity is an easy way of transmitting infection. Of course, we have the mucous membrane lining the vagina uh, is wet and it is very uh, liable to cuts by sexual act causing some fissures or small abrasions. So, 
any infection or any bacteria present in the semen could be transmitted from male to female and vice versa. What are the organisms causing this sexual infections? The organism causing sexual transmitted infections can be classified into groups. Certain group of them are asymptomatic. So I can't notice any disease, although they are transmitted through fluids from male to female and vice versa. Some infection can cause venereal diseases like gonorrhea, like uh, syphilis. Others cause non-venereal diseases. They go out of the genital tract to cause other diseases like HIV. Uh, coexistence. Some organisms favor the growth of other organisms with them. So it is very usual to find two organisms at the same time causing infection. Some others can cause evasion of the host's immune response. We will take examples now. Of course, treatment of these uh, sexual infections with bacteria will be antibiotics. We usually use combination of antimicrobial therapy to cause effective treatment. Common microbial causes of sexual transmitted infections. Bacterial of course, there is bacterial and viral. Now, bacterial, chlamydia trachomatis, it causes non-gonococcal urethritis. It means inflammation in the male urethra caused by chlamydia, not by gonococci. So, we call it non-gonococcal urethritis. Cervicites, inflammation of the cervix in female. Pelvic inflammatory disease, which is widespread infection in the pelvis. Number two, Neisseria gonorrhea. These are gram-negative gonococci. They cause a disease called gonorrhea. Uh, Triponema pallidum. It's a spiral bacteria. It causes what we call syphilis. There are other less common causes of sexual transmitted infections, like mycoplasma. It causes also non gonococcal urethritis, cervicites, and pelvic inflammatory disease. Urea plasma, it causes postpartum fever and chorioamnionitis and other less uh, common infections like Haemophilus decori causing chancroid and Klebsiella granulomatis causing granuloma in Guaina. As well as bacterial causes of sexual transmitted infection, there is also fungal cause, which is candida uh, group, mainly candida albicans, causing genital candidiasis. Also, there, is, uh, there are many viruses causing sexually transmitted infections. We will study them in the following lectures. Genital tract infections. Uh, there are three ways of catching this sexual transmitting infection. Either endogenous or exogenous or iatrogenic. Endogenous way, that is some of the normal flora of the vagina which are present in small numbers, like Candida or Gardnerella vaginalis, might increase in number due to any uh, uh, decrease in immunity or continuous use of antibiotics or uh, uh, any other cause. 
makes this organism to increase in number and takes over the others and cause infection. So we call this way of infection endogenous. There is another way which is exogenous. During sexual act between males and females, of course there, is, uh, there are mixing of the fluids, vaginal fluid and semen, and any organisms could be transmitted from uh, male to female or uh, female to male. Um, there is a third way which we call it iatrogenic. What does it mean, iatrogenic? It means uh, induction of infection by using some unsterilized or not well sterilized instrument. For example, uh, we put loop for a female or we treat erosions or any intervention uh, through the vagina. Uh, might transfer infection from the lower genital tract to the upper genital tract, resulting in uterine infection or tubal infection. Chlamydia trachomatis. We will discuss Chlamydia trachomatis, which is one of the Chlamydia group causing sexual transmitted infections. Chlamydia are group of gram-negative bacteria. They are very small bacteria, measured around 250 to 400 nanometers. They live inside cells. They cannot exist long outside the cell. It exists in two forms. First, as what we call elementary body. This elementary body is capable of attaching to the cells of the uh, reproductive system and it enters by phagocytosis inside this cell or by endocytosis inside this cell. Once it enters, it will develop into another form which is reticulate body. So the infectious stage is the elementary body. Chlamydia are present as elementary bodies outside the cell. They attach themselves into cells right, and enter by endocytosis. Inside the cell, they are called inclusion bodies. Uh, this inclusion could be stained and seen by microscope for diagnosis of the presence of chlamydia inside cells. This elementary uh, body uh, inside the cell enlarges and form what we call reticulate body. This reticulate body is able to replicate and forms many, many other reticulate bodies. After some time, they are transformed again into elementary bodies and the cell ruptures or exocytosis releasing new elementary bodies which reinfect other cells. Uh, Chlamydia trachomatis has 15 uh, serotypes. A, B, C cause uh, trachoma in the eye. But here we will discuss sexual transmitted infections caused by serotypes from D till K. These serotypes cause sexually transmitted infection or chlamydia trachomatis infections. In males, they cause non-gonococcal urethrites, that is inflammation of the urethra, and epididymitis, that is inflammation of epididymis. In females, they affect the cervix, causing mucoperulant cervicites. They affect the fallopian tubes, causing salpingites. They may affect the whole pelvis, causing pelvic 
inflammatory diseases. This may result in infertility and ectopic pregnancy. Also in babies uh, during birth, passing through birth canal, it might cause neonatal inclusion conjunct uh, conjunctivitis with neonatal pneumonia. There is another form of chlamydia trachomatis, serotype, L1, L2, and L3, that can cause another sexual transmitted infection called lymphogranuloma venerea. It starts like pilus papule. The word granuloma means swelling, means papule, um, on the external genital organs, or it might be painless ulcer. Then it will be transmitted to the regional inguinal lymph nodes here. They enlarge and become uh, tender and at last <coughs> they suppurate, releasing pus on the adjacent skin. Healing occurs by formation of a scar, which will lead to stricture in the lymphatic vessels, and this is very dangerous. You know, lymphatic vessels drain the fluids and the tissue fluids back to the veins. So here, this fluid will accumulate and will cause swelling in the genital area, what we call genital elephantiasis. This is, of course, a late stage. Laboratory diagnosis. We can uh, detect this chlamydia, as we have said, inside the cell by what we call cytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Inside the cell, we will see the cytoplasmic inclusion bodies, which are the elementary bodies inside the cells. They could be seen if they are stained with GIMSA stain, iodine, or fluorescent antibody stain. The second way to detect uh, chlamydia is antigen detection by ELISA or immunofluorescence. The third way is nucleic acid detection by nucleic acid probes or PCR. If I want to isolate the organism, I should uh, see the organism intracellular on isolation on McCoy cell culture. And then I detect the organism inside cells by the previous stain, GIMSA, iodine, or fluorescent antibody stain. Effective treatment includes azithromycin, which is a macrolide, and doxycycline, which is a type of tetracycline. Treatment should target both patients, the male and the female, and their sexual partners, of course. Safe sexual practices are to be done to prevent cross-infection. The second important bacteria causing sexual transmitted infection is Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is one of two types of Neisseria. One is Neisseria meningitidis causing meningitis and the other is Neisseria gonorrhea causing a disease, sexual transmitted disease called gonorrhea. There are some commensal non pathogenic Neisseria present in the vagina. Not all Neisseria present are pathogenic. Um, gonococci are relatively fragile organisms. What does it mean, fragile? Yani they get destroyed by uh, temperature 
dryness, ultraviolet light, and other environmental conditions. Morphology. Under the microscope, we can see uh, gonococci as gram-negative cocci arranged in pairs with adjacent surfaces flat or slightly concave, giving kidney-shaped appearance. In clinical specimen, of course, in pus, I will find this uh, organism inside and outside pus cells. Uh, motility, they are uh, motile with twitching motility and processes pili that enable them to adhere to the surface and are non-spore forming. Culture. Neisseria gonorrhea needs strict aerobic condition, but better we add also 5 to 10 percent carbon dioxide. It helps growth. Also, it needs body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius, for 24 hours. They grow on enriched media, what we call chocolate agar or modified thiamagtin agar. Thiamagtin agar is a medium containing vancomycin, cholestine, and nystatine to inhibit other bacteria or fungi and allows Neisseria species only to grow. Biochemical reactions. All Neisseria are oxidase and catalase positive. Neisseria gonorrhea, which is the pathogenic Neisseria, utilizes or ferments only glucose with the production of acid only. Other commensal Neisseria show variable sugar fermentation. Antigenic structure and virulence factors. Neisseria has pili. They help attachment of the organism to mucosal cells. Neisseria gonorrhea uses type 4 pillars, which reduce twitching motility, to attach itself to the cells in the vagina or in the infection site. Other virulence factors include surface proteins, which help in attachment of the bacteria to the host cells. Also, lipooligosaccharides. There are type of lipopolysaccharides uh, in the cell wall. Immunoglobulin A proteases. These are proteins that breaks down immunoglobulin A antibodies. Uh, the diagram shows that immunoglobulin A proteases produced by Neisseria and other organisms like Haemophilus or Streptococcus can break down the immunoglobulin A1 uh, antibodies present on the surface of mucosal cells into pieces and thus stop this defense mechanism. Another virulence factor is the ability to enter the mucosal cells, what we call epithelial endocytosis. After attachment of gonococci to the surface of mucosal cell, the cells undergo endocytosis. This is similar to phagocytosis. And here gonococci will live inside vacuoles to be protected against antibodies or antimicrobial agents. These vacuoles transport the bacteria to the base of the cell where they are exocytosed outside the cell to be disseminated through blood to other parts of the body. Diseases caused by gonococci. Gonococci cause two types of infection. 
venereal infection and non-venereal gonococcal infections. How do they do this? Uh, as we have said, gonococci attack the mucous membrane of uh, genitourinary tract, producing suppuration, following by chronic inflammatory inflammation and fibrosis. Uh, certain strains of gonococci can disseminate and go to uh, several places, especially if this is uh, an immunocompromised host. In male, gonococci causes first acute gonorrhea. It starts two to five days after exposure to infection, usually at the anterior viscera with perilent perfused discharge and painful micturition. Later on, after two weeks, it extends to the posterior urethra with increasing dysuria and polyuria and the discharge decreases. If not treated, it will be transformed into chronic gonorrhea where infection may extend to other parts like prostate, bladder, epididymis, seminal vesicles, and might lead to sterility. In chronic gonorrhea, the discharge is skin chip, is little, and it appears as a morning drop. In female, gonorrhea starts with acute gonorrhea also. Gonococci infect the urethra, the cervix, vulva, and rectum. Rectal infection occur up to 40% of women with gonorrhea. From the endocervical exudates contaminating the perineum. Symptoms include dysuria and cervicides with mucoperulent discharge. Chronic gonorrhea, the organism may spread upwards to the fallopian tubes and elsewhere in the pelvis causing salpingitis, inflammation of the tubes, and chronic pelvic infection. This may lead to sterility or ectopic pregnancies. Um, asymptomatic gonococcal infection can occur. It's rare in male and more common in females. In rectal and throat infection, could occur, especially in heterosexual women and homosexual men. Uh, now, repeated gonococcal infections are common. يعني ممكن واحدة أو واحد يخف وبعدين يرجع يأخذ تاني الجونوكوكاي ليل إميونش بتاعتها مش لونج ستاندينج. أولا لأن عندنا أنتيجينيك heterogeneity يعني there are many serotypes كمان عندنا uh, antigenic shifts كتيرة in the pili and surface protein they change the composition of their antigens كمان the superficial nature of infection بتخلي uh, immunoglobulin G which are common in blood uh, does, uh, do not reach this site of infection اللي بيتعامل هو سكريتري immunoglobulin A لكن لو نفتكر احنا قلنا في virulence factor called immunoglobulin A بروتيز بيكسر هذا immunoglobulin A Non-venereal gonococcal infections A. Valvovaginites in young female In young female بعكس old females, the vagina get infected through sharing towels or toilet seats. Kemen sometimes يحصل لنا gonococcal bacteremia, although it is rare, but if it happens, it will cause hemorrhagic papules and pustules, tenosynovitis and arthritis, endocarditis and meningitis. كمان عندنا أفثالميا نيوناتورم infection of the eyes of babies Laboratory diagnosis Diagnosis of acute gonorrhea in male We take direct smear 
from the discharge. A diagnosis of chronic male and acute and chronic female gonorrhea by specimen or direct smears stained with gram. Culture on chocolate agar or modified thyroid martin medium. Under the microscopic examination, we can see the intracellular and extracellular gonococci, kidney-shaped diplococci, and by biochemical reactions, we can notice fermentation of glucose. Recent methods for diagnosis of gonococci include immunofluorescence, ELISA, and GNA. Prevention and treatment. Prevention. To prevent sexually transmitted infection, usually use a condom. Uh, rapid promote treatment of symptoms before it is transformed into chronic stage. Ophthalmia neonatorum for uh, the babies is prevented by erythromycin ointment. To treat established infection, we use antibiotic called cefetriaxone. It is the treatment of choice. Plus azithromycin or doxycycline for possible chlamydial co-infection. Thanks for your attention.